Sonic Heroes is quite possibly my all-time favorite Sonic game. And what better way to celebrate GameCube games finally being available on retro achievements than to extract every little drop of content from this game until I get absolutely sick of it. Today, I'm getting every achievement in Sonic Heroes using the Retro Achievements website, giving me a total of... 114 achievements to get, holy crap. On the bright side, most of these achievements are stuff like beat all the bosses with this team, or get every A rank in the game, which I was expecting to have to do anyway. But after those are some really fun and unique achievements that I'm really excited to get to try out for myself. As for what they are, well, you'll just have to keep watching and find out, won't you? I'm writing this intro before actually starting the challenge, so if I had to guess how this is gonna go, I'd say this is going to be relatively difficult. Even though I know quite a bit about this game, some of these achievements look pretty ridiculous. So I'd imagine this is going to be the longest every achievement challenge yet. But will that still hold true by the end? And which achievement will finally be enough to make me lose my mind? Let's start from the top, shall we? This time, instead of splitting the video up into days, I think it makes a lot more sense to split it up by team since that'll keep the sections of the challenges nice and organized. So with that said, you might now be asking, why am I starting with Team Rose? Each team in Sonic Heroes has a sort of difficulty level assigned to them, and I usually like to play the teams in order of easiest to hardest. That means we're starting with Team Rose, who has shortened stages and really easy A ranks in comparison to each of the other teams. Out of the 114 achievements in this game, a total of 16 of them are tied to getting A ranks in each of the stages and bosses. As such, most of my time completing each team's stories will be spent trying to get an A rank. A a ranks in Sonic Heroes are perhaps some of the easiest A ranks to get in the entire franchise, mainly because it feels like Sega really underestimated just how many points you can get in a stage. Your main ways of getting score are beating enemies, getting these level up cores, collecting rings, and beating the stage relatively quickly. In addition, for each level up a character has by the end of a stage, you get an extra 500 points for a maximum of 4,500 extra points, which is definitely enough to make or break an a rank if you didn't do enough during the main stage. But when it comes to Team Rose in particular, you don't even need to do that much most of the time. With the exception of Grand Metropolis and Egg Fleet, just going through the stage as fast as you can and ignoring everything will usually give you a high enough time bonus to instantly get you the A rank. You could and probably should still beat some enemies to make sure you get it, but if you can't be bothered, then Sonic Heroes will happily fuel your lazy tendencies as long as you play as Big the Cat while you're doing it. Team Rose will also be the team I tackle the special stages with, as their shorter stages are perfect for replaying them quickly should I happen to fail the special stage. As for the special stages themselves, I'm going to just gloss over them for now, as they'll have their own dedicated section later due to the 14 achievements that are tied to them. Why am I not just doing these achievements now and getting them out of the way? Because, dear viewer, I actually value my sanity, thank you very much, and I'd rather save these for after I've had some fun first. Can you really blame me, Sonic hasn't exactly been batting very good averages for which special stages are even tolerable. When I make it to the first boss, it's finally time for my first two achievements. Cracking a few eggs with your speed asks you to beat the Egg Hawk within a minute and 20 seconds with only your speed character. All this really requires of you is to shorten the lifespan of your controller by relentlessly mashing the homing attack against Eggman's stupid face. You might need some luck, since getting damage on this thing with just homing attacks can be a bit inconsistent, but keep at it until you get your perfect run and bank the achievement. Yeah, so this looks a little different because RetroArch doesn't currently support GameCube achievements, so I had to use Dolphin for this. If the achievement indicator looks a little small for you because of that, sorry, there's not really much I can do about that until they add more customization options. Most achievements, like the ones I just did, are gonna be safe for challenge mode, which I usually go to after I beat a team's story mode. So for now, I just beat the next couple sets of stages, getting Sonic Let's Go on Our Honeymoon for beating Team Sonic, and that was quite a challenge for beating Robot Carnival. However, I then went back to Casino Park to do something kind of cool. Enjoying the nightlife without Zero chasing you, an achievement with a comically long name, requires you to skip the first goal ring in Casino Park and reach the second one further in the level. Team Rose has a few of these kinds of achievements, and I decided to go for all of them during story mode since I should still be able to get the A rank for each level while still getting this achievement. For this stage, after making it to the first goal ring, I 
use Team Rose's Team Blast, which among a few other effects, gives me speed shoes. After that, I belly flop with Big while quickly switching to Amy. This gives me a burst of speed, after which I thread the needle around the goal ring and do a big jump. Holding the jump button with Amy for a while activates this hammer glide that gets me across the gap, closing the rest of the distance with a homing attack. There aren't any other obstacles past that, and the layout of the level seems to be similar to Team Sonic's, so there's not much more to note as I reach the next goal ring and get the achievement. A couple levels later at Bullet Station, it's already time for the next goal ring achievement. Using another Team Blast for speed shoes at the end of the stage, I grind this rail up to the top, then use some of the momentum from it to jump and fly to the rails up above. Interestingly, the second goal ring for this level is placed not too far past the first one, which makes me believe Team Rose was supposed to be able to make it here at some point in development, but they moved their goal ring closer for some reason. Whatever the reason, that's another achievement in the bag, after which I beat the next boss and his action replay that lets him hit me in the middle of a cutscene. What? This is all he really has going for him though, as I beat him soon after and get the let's go look for Froggy and Chocola now achievement. Another stage, another skipped goal ring. Although admittedly, I have absolutely no idea how you're actually supposed to do this one. A chat member had said something about using the ivy near the goal ring without activating the frog to make it across, but at that point I had already activated the frog and the rain will never go away once it starts. So instead, after using a team blast, I fruitlessly flew across across the gap without enough speed to make it, before getting this sudden bounce upwards that gave me enough distance to land on the platform. I have no idea how that trick worked. Part of me thinks it's frame perfect, but I honestly don't care because I made it and eventually got the achievement. But do you want to know the funny part? I did basically the same thing in the very next level's goal ring achievement. I spent almost a good 10 minutes trying to work out how to cross this gap. There's an invisible wall behind the goal ring and an invisible ceiling above it, so that's a no-go, and trying to make it from below seemed like it was too far away even with speed shoes. But then, miraculously, the bounce happened again and I got across no problem. If anyone knows how exactly you're intended to make it over here, please let me know, because I get the distinct feeling I cheese this and that's hilarious. Anyway, Team Rose goes through the entire rest of the level and even has a heated run-in with Vector's dad before reaching the end and giving me, I'm not lost. I just don't know where I'm going now. That's all of the second goal ring achievements I got in story mode, but there's one more that I decided to save for challenge mode since it seemed like it would be a step up in difficulty compared to the others. So, I simply beat the rest of Team Rose's story mode, starting with destroying Team Chaotix. There's gotta be a major misunderstanding here, but we can't back down now. Yeah, neither can I. Bye guys. Alright, see ya. <laughs> Not bad. And if that wasn't cool enough for you, my next target to destroy was the very fabric of reality itself. Got it! This is great. This is great. Get back, <laughs> this is a great game. After properly showing off just a fraction of my power to Eggman, I effortlessly beat up all of his robots for the Robot Freaks Are So Disgusting achievement, followed soon after by beating the Egg Emperor and getting the We Did It, Now I Could Take Froggy Home With Me achievement. That wraps up Team Rose's story mode, and also marks the beginning of where I'll be spending most of my time, challenge mode. Here I'll be replaying levels to grab the achievements I missed from them, starting with Seaside Hill. I hope you're ready, we're about to rapid fire some achievements. Cute Rabbit taking control of the rescue mission requires that you beat Seaside Hill with only cream, with a score of 48,000 or higher by the end, which is the score you need to get the A rank. Considering how easy Team Rose's A ranks are to get, even this this restriction isn't really enough to make it difficult. All you have to do is avoid killing enemies until Cream is level 3, at which point your Thunder Shoot will be strong enough to one-shot most of the enemies without shields. From there, balance going fast with taking out easy enemies. Be sure to dodge this formation change gate, and you should get more than enough points for the achievement. Up next is this achievement, which serves as a sort of introduction to 1-up achievements, where you have to find a certain number of 1-ups or team blast monitors, or basically any 
kind of hidden goodie throughout the stage. For all of these one-up achievements, a retro achievements user by the name of Tommy Deal has written a guide for each individual one in the comments under said achievements. Huge shout outs to Tommy Deal for these guides, as they single-handedly saved me quite a bit of time in the long run. Thanks a lot, man. For this achievement in particular, you also have to get these one-ups with only Amy, while also finishing the stage afterwards. This isn't too hard as long as you take full advantage of Amy's moveset, and also dodge this bastard of a formation change gate. Ah! For most of these 1-up achievements, I'm only going to be briefly showing where each of the 1-ups are. Partly because I'm lazy, but also partly because this video would get really repetitive if I just turned it into a YouTube tutorial on where everything is. I only try to do that for achievements that I think would really benefit from it. So, note where all the 1-ups are in the video, and you should be able to bank the achievement without much issue. After going back to the Team Sonic boss and beating them without the speed character or Team Blast for the complete destruction without the Tornadoes achievement, my next Next target is the Egg Albatross to get decimating a d d d What the fuck is this word? Diamadiody. Diomadiody? That sounds like it's being pronounced wrong, but anyway. Decimating a Diomadiody with fireballs requires you to beat the Egg Albatross under a certain time depending on the team, with Team Rose's time being under a minute and 20 seconds. To do this, instead of chasing after it, walk backwards and let it fly over to you. Then when it gets in close, simply fire some fireballs at it with big and its health will go down really fast depending on how many times you can hit it. If you do it correctly, for the the first two phases, you should only have to lure it back to you two times before he's down to just the egg hawk. Once you're at that point, do the same thing, but this time do a jumping shot and it should one shot him. The only real hard part of this was coming up with the strategy, but even then it wasn't really that hard. In Hang Castle, this achievement asks you to beat the level without pressing the A button and with enough score for the A rank. This is easier than you think it is, but it requires some precision in some places so you don't trap yourself. At the beginning of the stage, you can use Big's regular attack to break these boxes without needing to jump. Then switch to cream as you fall so you can slow your descent and aim for the middle platform. After hitting this gravity switch, your controls will sort of rotate? It's really hard to explain, but you need to quickly press up in order to land on this higher platform with a switch on it. Otherwise, you'll have to repeat the process over again. When you hit this ramp at the end of the winding path, switch to cream again so that you're in fly formation when you hit the gravity switch. Land beside the rail, then just walk off the platform towards this further platform off in the distance. As long as you're in fly formation, you should float with enough speed to make it over there. From there, you just have to wait for this platform to take you to the goal ring. And if you did all this fast enough, you should have more than enough points to get the achievement. Up next is one of the more difficult achievements, because it's technically two achievements wrapped up in one. As Team Rose, you need to enter the well in Mystic Mansion with at least 310 rings collected. This well it's talking about is at a point in the level that Team Rose doesn't normally go to, so this is another case of needing to get past the goal ring. Thankfully, this achievement doesn't seem to be very strict. There are a bit more than 310 rings in the level, so you're able to miss things like the balloons in the bobsled section and still get the amount of rings you need. Plus, if you keep an eye out for rings, they practically hand them out to you. By the time I reached Papyrus over here, I had well over 200 rings and was already close to the total. In order to get past the goal ring, make sure you pop all the balloons Papyrus will have on his hands, then hit the switch on the end, grind on this middle rail that curves upwards, and then jump off the end of it in fly formation. This will give you a lot of height, enough for you to just fly up into the hole in the ceiling to continue on. From there, be very careful and grab every ring you see, being sure to break some of the boxes along the way as they may have some ring capsules you need. I should also use this opportunity to teach you a trick regarding Team Blast that will save you a lot of time in the long run. To play this part, Part super safe, I use a team blast to destroy the enemies in this room. However, in the next room, there's a big enemy that I also want to use team blast on, which would require me to fill up my gauge again. Now, I could just spam Thundershoot for the next two minutes in order to fill it up, but there's a much faster way that will fill the gauge up in seconds. Switch to fly formation, then perform a Thundershoot while switching to power formation at the exact same time. I'm pretty sure you need to press them on the same frame, but much like this entire game, this trick can be a little finicky, so you'll have to practice the timing. If you do it right, your fly character will slowly float upwards, and your team blast gauge will fill by quite a bit. Repeat this another three times, and you
and you'll completely fill it, letting you use as many Team Blasts as you need whenever you need it. With this trick in mind, cautiously make your way through the rest of the level, and by jumping into this well with the required amount of rings, the achievements should pop. That leaves me with one last achievement to get with Team Rose, that being searching for a self-destruct to meet self-interest, which requires me to trigger a misplaced self-destruct switch. Said switch is located directly to the left of this structure with a fan in it. By using yet another Team Blast for some speed shoes, Cream can get just enough speed to jump and fly over to the switch's hitbox. This drags everyone over to activate the switch and lets me earn what's technically the last Team Rose achievement. But we're not quite done with Team Rose yet, as we still have to play as them a little in order to get every emblem and every A rank. Every level in Sonic Heroes has two missions, the regular mission that you complete in story mode, and an extra mission with a more difficult objective to complete. All of Team Rose's extra missions require you to get 200 rings, upon which the mission will immediately end. Each goal ring in these extra missions is replaced with a ring that will take you back to the beginning of the level, and also respawn any rings and enemies that were previously defeated. As such, I spend the rest of the stream beating each of these extra missions and getting an A rank on all of them. Your focus for Team Rose's extra missions is to get those 200 rings as fast as possible, as your rank is based purely on time, not score. These A ranks are still really generous though, so as long as you're reasonably decent at Sonic Heroes, these should only take a few tries at most. With that, Team Rose's objectives are finished. I'll be using them again later in order to get the special stage achievements, but for now, we can move on to the next team on the list. Team Sonic's campaign acts as this game's normal mode. Compared to Team Rose, Team Sonic goes through way more of the level and has generally harder layouts featuring more enemies. It doesn't really get that much harder than Team Rose until they get to the later stages, but some of the enemies can be hard to deal with if you haven't fully caught on to how the game works yet. As for how I'm playing the game, unlike Team Rose, I won't be going out of my way for many achievements that aren't progression based quite yet, as Team Sonic doesn't really have anything I can do reasonably just by beating the stage. I did try to get this achievement by beating Rail Canyon in under 3 minutes and 40 seconds, but I ended up just barely missing it, so I eventually just went for it in challenge mode instead. As such, story mode is just me playing the game normally while also getting as many A ranks as I can. Through finishing story mode, I obtained Amazing Machine, but not amazing enough, for beating Egghawk, Marriage, no way, for beating Team Rose, Making Robots is the same as breaking them after Robot Carnival, Eggman You'll Never Beat Us after Egg Albatross, Hey Guys Chill Out for beating Team Dark, Not a Very Bright Move for a Genius after Robot Storm, and finally Great Party Eggman for defeating the Egg Emperor and finishing Team Sonic's story. Time for challenge mode. This time, and for every other team, I'm going to be mixing in the extra missions as I go from level to level in order. So for example, Seaside Hill has this achievement which requires me to find three 1-ups and three Team Blast monitors throughout the level. For this, I'll go into Team Sonic's normal mission and do whatever I need to do to eventually get the achievement. Then, I'll do the extra mission for Seaside Hill and move on from there. With this in mind, Grand Metropolis also has a 1-up achievement, this time grabbing five of them, which as I said earlier, I'm going to gloss over from now on. Here are the locations for those of you that are doing this yourself, but if you want a more detailed breakdown, that's what my boy Tommy Deal wrote his guides for, so go give those a read. As for Team Sonic's extra missions, they're basically exactly the same as their normal missions, but now with a somewhat strict time limit that you have to adhere to. Other than that, the levels are exactly the same, with maybe a slightly higher point requirement, but it's not enough to make a difference. Part of me really wishes they made your rank dependent on time rather than score for these missions to change up how you play the level, but oh well. As I reach Casino Park, it's time for the next achievement. First, a gold statue, and now my face on a casino table, requires you to use the cannon to go to the VIP table. There's not much to note here. The switch to bring down the laser gate to the VIP table is located right here on this part of the pinball table right after where Team Rose's goal ring was. From there, the laser gate that blocked the middle path here is gone, and you can follow the path to get the achievement. This achievement in Bingo Highway asks you to find the three special stage keys, which, thank god, our friend Tommy also has a guide for that. Here are the locations, but you know the drill by now.
I hope. Following that, I return to Rail Canyon to get the speedrun achievement I've described earlier. If you're inexperienced with Sonic Heroes and haven't really played it for very long yet, this achievement is going to take you a while. I'm someone who's been playing this game for well over a decade now, and I still only got this achievement by about 10 seconds. Which isn't as much as you think it is since I was actually doing some skips. The best I can tell you for this achievement is to practice as much as you can, ignore basically everything, and try your best to find skips like this one to shave some time. In the description, I'll be leaving the raw video of this run for you to use as a reference. With enough time and patience, you'll be able to speed through the level fast enough to eventually get the achievement. In Bullet Station, I also get the Without Switches, Launch Your Head Into It achievement, which actually gives you a hint on what you're supposed to do to get it right in the title. After falling down this grate, enter the cannon with Knuckles and just fire immediately. This will break down the door and let you enter the cannon quickly, which is something I I had absolutely no idea you could do. Shout outs to Wandering Hey Ho, apologies if I absolutely butchered that, for making this achievement and teaching me something cool about a game I love. Frog Forest has another one-up achievement, and while I show you the locations, I want to just read you the name of this achievement because it's weird. This achievement is called Would I Find the Doctor Here? I'll Live to See the Answer. What the fuck does that even mean? It feels like a reference I don't get, so I guess I'm just destined to have someone explain it to me in the comments section. The next two achievements are more 1-up achievements, with Lost Jungle needing you to find 4 1-ups, while Egg Fleet needs you to find 2 20 ring balloons and 6 1-ups. For Lost Jungle, while the first 3 1-ups aren't too hard to find and get to, the last one is on the Swinging Vine section. You somehow have to know to keep count of which vine you're swinging on and mess up on specifically the 15th vine to fall to the one-up. But even that can be really finicky with your character still somehow overshooting it. Don't ask why I tried to do this with the extra minute where I have a time limit. I can be very dense sometimes. I eventually get the achievement though, and the Egg Fleet's items are absolutely no problem in comparison. So here's where they all are, and here's the achievement popping. Thanks again, Tommy. Believe it or not, that was the last achievement specific to Team Sonic. But after finishing all of Team Sonic's extra missions with all A ranks, I decide to go for one more easy one. A Ruler Needs Power to Command Eggman requires you to beat Egg Emperor with only your power type character in less than three minutes. This time limit is very lenient, as it fully accounts for the fight taking two cycles to finish. So, simply switch to Knuckles at the start of the fight, get as many level ups as you can, then when you reach the big arena, take out the four turrets to get rid of their projectiles while also building up your team blast gauge a bit. Then, just go to town! Beat the absolute shit out of Eggman, using a team blast when you can to do even more damage. It might take a bit of luck for Knuckles to do enough damage, but this should give you more than enough time to finish off the Egg Emperor and claim the achievement. We're done with Team Sonic. I'm feeling pretty good about that. What team's up next? Oh no. Small note, the timer for the next while is going to be off by a few hours because I literally put the wrong number in when setting it up. Man, I just can't escape making small dumb mistakes, huh? Team Chaotix is by far my least favorite part of Sonic Heroes. Team Chaotix acts not really as a static difficulty mode, it's a bit more complicated than that. Instead of just gunning for the end of the level like every other good team does, each level in Team Chaotix's campaign has a unique mission for you to complete. These missions can range from find a few MacGuffins in the level to absolute pain and misery. As such, their difficulty fluctuates to being a bit harder than Team Sonic to being harder than Team Dark depending on the level. So once again, I first focus on just beating their story with as few deviations as possible to unlock their levels in challenge mode. This nets me a bunch of achievements as usual, including Death to the Evil One, Prepare to Die, Eggman, which sounds like a fucking Dragon Ball Z episode, before picking a fight, better know who you're up against, such a disorderly crowd, just a waste of our time, that giant ship was so cool looking, too bad we destroyed it, sorry Sorry ladies, we took it easy on ya. Did he really think he could stop us with that? And alright boys, a job well done. Good 
God, these are some long achievement names. Time for Team Chaotix's extra missions, which are probably some of the worst missions in the entire goddamn franchise. Most of the time, if the level needed you to find half of a certain amount of objects, you'll now be tasked with finding every single one of them. And even in a level as easy as Seaside Hill, a mission like this can turn a relatively easy scavenger hunt into a grueling trial for your eyeballs. Look at how small these fucking crabs are. It's so easy for you to miss one if you run through the level at normal speed. Hell, I did miss this one several times before someone else pointed it out to me. Not to mention, some of them are hidden in the weirdest locations. How many of you knew this one-up was even down here before doing this extra mission and being forced to find out? I'm going to try to not rant too much about these unless they're relevant to an achievement, because as much as complaining about a video game does give me a lot to talk about, I feel like it can get pretty annoying after a while. Plus, I have a hard enough time staying focused on script writing as it is. I absolutely need to be concise. And hey, here's a positive. Doing this extra mission let me grab the key for the special stage by complete accident. And I actually managed to get the spear collecting as my specialty one achievement while I was there. Pretty cool. Let's actually keep talking about achievements now, shall we? Optimizing an oceanic rescue operation requires you to beat Ocean Palace as Team Chaotix with less than 9,000 points while still getting an A rank. The key to this is to get all of your characters to as high a level as possible, as quickly as possible, while still beating some enemies to get your score as close to 9,000 as you can without going over. It sounds complicated, but trust me, when you play this game enough times, being being able to do all this at one time is just a natural skill you develop. Thus, I was able to balance everything out, and even without everyone leveled up and only about 6,600 points, I managed to get the achievement. I just barely got it by 10 fucking points, but I got it. Next is another 1-up achievement. Oh, Tommy! I'm respecting your guide by crediting you, but asserting my laziness as a gamer by mindlessly following your guide without trying the challenge for myself anyway! Spirits unite! Anyway, after that, next up is this achievement, which requires you to beat Casino Park without using the slot machines and with a score of 46,000 by the end. This is pretty self-explanatory. Just focus on getting the 200 rings you need off the ground instead of from a pinball table, which sounds simple enough. The problem is that the controls on these tables are so shitty that actively controlling where you're going on them is a fucking pipe dream. While attempting this, you will end up failing at least once because you weren't able to dodge a slot machine due to the left and right control on these tables, just deciding to not work fast enough. Or maybe one of your dipshit teammates will enter a slot machine without you knowing, and they'll make a match for you, causing you to lose. This didn't happen to me while attempting this, but just just know that it is possible for it to happen, and you will cry if it does. I was originally going to also complain about needing to get 46,000 points as well, due to it feeling a bit unnecessary, and also because the score requirement for this achievement is 46,000 rather than 45,000, despite 45,000 giving you the A rank, what the fuck? guys. And while I do still think that, it's ultimately not that hard to get the points you need as long as you kill every enemy you can and get the rings as fast as possible. But of course, because the tables are so inconsistent, if you spend too long on a couple of them, you may not get the time bonus you need for the A rank, which will suck the life out of you if that happens. It took me a couple tries to finally get this achievement, and you bet I was relieved when it was finally over. At least after this, I get to unwind with another 1-up achievement. They take a while, but at least I don't have to do anything really difficult while grabbing what I need. And what do you know, after another sucky, destroy all the things extra mission, here's another 1-up achievement that should be over by the time I finish this upcoming sentence. This one has an extra requirement of not being detected, but as long as you're careful, that shouldn't be a problem at all. Up next, I go straight to this area's boss for Can't Catch a Thief You Can't Find where you have to be Team Rose as only Espio while remaining invisible for the whole fight. This is entirely down to luck. So much so, the Team Rose can just immediately decide that you lose by attacking you while you're transforming, failing the achievement instantly. I eventually won, in quotation marks, by just homing attacking the other team from above. I say, in quotation marks, because Big somehow just 
completely disappeared while I was attacking him, basically letting me win. No idea how that happened, so we'll chalk it up to pure skill and move on. After another 1-up achievement that's fairly easy since you only have to find 2 1-ups for it, I go for Ninja So Secret the other detectives do the work, which requires me to beat Egg Fleet without using Espio and with 33,000 points or more at the end. You have to use some trickier maneuvers than you're probably used to at this point to get past the obstacles met for Espio, but aside from a couple of team blasts in order to get the points you need, this isn't that hard once you know the layout and how to navigate it without Espio. After getting this achievement, that's the last of the Team Chaotix achievements, thank god. So I finish up their last extra missions, including Final Fortress, which is another pretty convoluted one if you don't know where everything is. But once that's done, I'm finally ready to move on to Team Dark. Well, actually, I was ready to move on to Team Dark two hours ago, but, you know, semantics. Team Dark's campaign acts as this game's hard mode, featuring a ton of different enemies and each level's full, unabridged layout. Although it can be a bit dense in terms of the amount of enemies you have to fight, this is probably my favorite campaign in Sonic Heroes as it shows off the game's fantastic level design to its fullest. Once again, I focused on just beating Team Dark's story mode while getting all the A ranks I can with two exceptions. At any point while playing as any of the teams, you can go into first person mode by pressing up on the C-Stick. Doing this as Team Dark and looking at Rouge for a few moments in first person makes her wink and gives you the start of a long journey. Let's pace ourselves. Yo, dude, chill out. It was just a wink. Then, when I got to Bingo Highway, I went for this achievement, where you have to beat the stage with 650 or more rings. Once again, the pinball mechanics are going to be your worst enemy here. Both staying on the table and maneuvering yourself towards the bingo chips to get a bunch of rings are challenges I wouldn't wish on my worst enemy. Not to mention, you have to get most of the chips on all of the tables if you don't want to sacrifice 15 minutes of your life to grinding more rings on said tables. It's it took me a few tries, but after a harrowing round of aerial bingo, I eventually got the rings I needed and finished the level to get the achievement. With that out of the way, here's the list of every achievement I got for beating Team Dark's story. Cruiser Battleship, destroyed! You should thank me for letting you live. Phew, did we get them all? Large Weapon Transporter Battleship, destroyed! Just a fake, like I thought. I've had enough of those guys. Large Ultimate Battle Robot, destroyed! Hey, uh, Editor Supersonic here, hopefully with a better sounding mic this time, sorry about that. I just wanted to pop in real quick and say something kind of cool about this boss fight in particular. This particular run of Egg Emperor that I had with Team Dark is actually number one on Retro Achievements leaderboards for this boss. If you didn't know, Retro Achievements has this sort of leaderboard system that when you complete a level, get score, get time, depending on the level, it'll submit that time or score scored to the leaderboards that they have, and Team Dark Egg Emperor specifically, I got the record on. And as far as I know, I'm looking at it now as I'm recording this, it's still up. I did improve upon the record a little in my own time, so it's a few seconds off what it was in the video. But yeah, if any Ultra Chad Sonic Heroes players <laughs> want to beat that time, then uh, there you go, there's your challenge, although I'm sure a speedrunner could knock that out in five minutes. Oh well. Back to the video. Alongside all those achievements, once I started Team Dark's extra missions, I'm going to start getting even more achievements. That's because each level in Sonic Heroes has an achievement tied to getting every A rank for each mission for every team. So, because Team Dark is my final team, I'll be finishing off those achievements as well. Team Dark's extra missions consist of you needing to beat 100 enemies in each stage, which sounds really daunting. However, like Team Rose, these missions rank you on time rather than score, and the A rank requirement for each of these missions is very, very generous, with some stages giving you up to 14 minutes to finish it. Trust me when I say that you'd have to be actively avoiding enemies to not get most of these in time. With that in mind, by completing these extra missions, I get 14 more achievements, including resorting to the seaside vacation spots, keep the emeralds away from any chow in the water, stealing your energy to keep playing, a 
city controlled by Eggman. Is this his land? 24 hours left. Better risk the world and your savings. No potato or computer chips found here. Keeping your eyes on the rails and your ranks. Now departing the Eggman cannon station. The perfect spot for frog fishing. Getting ranks and vanishing faster than the ghosts. No reason to always be Halloween season. This great army shall also be fleeting. And the key to success shall destroy the doctor's plans. Now we can move on to the regular achievements I got with Team Dirt. Oh, what's that? I missed one of the A rank achievements. Yeah, so it turns out in my rush to be finished with Team Chaotix, I completely forgot to do their extra mission for Lost Jungle. No big deal, the mission sucks, but what else do you expect from Team Chaotix? After mopping that up, I then get Not Lost when you know what to do, and now we can move on to the regular Team Dark achievements. And you know, nothing gets me going like a reading session of one of Tommy Deal's fantastic one-up achievement guides. What can I say? His works are very relaxing. Nothing can ruin my my mood now. Absolutely nothing. No sir, there's no achievement in the world that could make me feel like shit. This achievement. This achievement is a contender for one of the worst achievements I've ever had to get in any video game. Not just for this series. You have to beat the main mission of Grand Metropolis with at least 480 rings while only using Shadow. There are only 495 rings in the level, leaving you with very little room for error. Due to the amount of rings you have to get, and due to how long this level is in general, and due to you being handicapped in some areas by only using Shadow, expect every attempt to take at least 10 minutes if you're being careful, which you should be. Not only does Sonic heroes have a tendency to just randomly take your rings away through no fault of your own, you're also expected to dodge these formation gates so that your character isn't switched. Go through one of these gates seven minutes into an attempt? Too bad! Start the whole level over. This achievement goes beyond just being difficult, or an endurance test. I think this is straight up just a bad achievement. No shade towards the creators themselves, of course, but holy shit, dude, was combining these two challenges into one achievement really necessary? You have absolutely no mortal conception of how much more fun these would be if they were two separate achievements. It might not help much for the ring mission, but for the shadow only mission, it would really give that challenge some room to breathe. Between certain jumps that you have to nail first try, lest you're forced to perform some of the jankiest shit on planet earth to make progress, the aforementioned formation change gates that will kill your run instantly if you go through one, and the general stress of having over 400 rings and trying your best not to make any stupid mistakes. These two challenges being put together has me convinced the creator of this achievement is an evil mastermind. This achievement took me almost two hours, which to some of you sounds like child's play, but to me that feels like a fucking eternity. Be very careful, be sure to memorize where every set of rings are, and put aside an afternoon for pain and suffering, and eventually you'll cross the goal and get your well-deserved achievement. <sighs> so, Tommy Deal, huh? You know, I really like what his guides have to say about society and the human condition. Really, just utterly fascinating pieces of work those are. This entry in particular, although it's shorter, wow did it leave an impact on me. Especially when the main character died at the end. Truly one of the greatest works of our time. What the fuck am I writing? This is what happens when you give someone bad at script writing too much power. Guess what? It's another fucking ring mission! Thankfully, you only have to get 270 rings this time, and there's no other requirement like only using shadow or something like that. But still, considering how bad the last mission was, surely I have some really choice words about how utterly bullshit this achievement was. I beat it on my first try. Yeah, because I was able to use Rouge and Omega as well, the enemies were a lot easier to deal with once everyone was leveled up. Combine that with a lot of rings being an easy to spot balloons, and you have a recipe for a relatively comfortable achievement. Now, could this have been a nightmare if I had another debilitating skill issue? Absolutely, but the conditions for this achievement compared to the last one were, in my opinion, way more fun. So in turn, I had a good time with this achievement. I know, I can hardly believe it myself. Now, if you'll excuse Excuse me, I have some more Tommy Deal reading material to absorb into my being. Oh, 
Wow, this one only has two one-ups to get. Pretty easy. Finally, we're at the last regular achievement, and it's one that I thought was going to be a pain in the ass. But with some creativity, it actually ended up being a fun way to test how much I know about this game. Preparing your plan of attack on the egg base requires you to beat Final Fortress while switching characters nine times or less, and with at least 65,000 points by the end. If you play your cards right, you should get that 65,000 point total before you even reach the goal ring with plenty of switches to spare. Here's how I did it. When starting the level, stay as Shadow for the first minute or so. Hop across to the top rail, grab this Team Blast capsule and then use a tornado to make it back up, then use it on these two robots, grabbing any level ups they drop. Use the switch to light speed dash across, then hit the checkpoint. Triangle jump across the very top of this pit and grab this Team Blast balloon, then continue on until you get to this first golden robot. You have to kill this one, but be sure to make it a point to kill every one of these robots you see, as they each give give an enormous 10,000 points for beating them. After going up these two poles with Shadow, you'll come up to your first character switch. Switch to Omega to use the fan, then at the end of this rail, make your second switch over to Rouge. Hopefully by this point, Rouge will be at least level 2, which will help out a lot with these upcoming parts. Continue through the normal path to encounter another golden robot, which a Rouge that's level 2 or above should be able to sort out pretty easily. Build up your Team Blast gauge as you progress, using it to take out this big robot here. As you step on the self-destruct switch, the game will automatically use your third switch to switch to Shadow, whom you should stay as as you dodge the lasers. At the end of this section, use your fourth switch to go back to Rouge and take the top path here. If you end up falling to where this red robot is, simply kill it to move on. We're coming up on a really long section whose robots aren't really going to help the point total at all. In fact, they might take away from the time bonus that would make for a great backup if we miss a robot at some point. So we're going to skip it entirely. Do a full jump at the end of the rail and then fly up to the upper rail, using Thundershoot to freeze your fly gauge for a second to let you make it. I did this next part the hard way by flying over to this far off rail with the same Thundershoot technique, but you could instead just jump down to this part of the level here and use this boost ramp to do the same thing. Either way, coming up to this section, we're going to skip some of it, but you do not want to skip the very bottom part. Down here are two golden robots worth a whopping 20,000 points, so beating them is very important. After beating these robots, normally you'd have to use your 5th switch to switch to Omega to use a fan and hit a gong, then use your 6th switch to switch to Shadow to use a pole. But by using a precise trick where you fly with Rouge, then press fly again just as you hit the ground, you'll pop up a bit with Rouge while completely refilling your fly gauge. Doing this 2 or 3 times lets you get enough height to get up to the very top without switching from Rouge. One team blast on these 3 robots will then open the door, and using the self destruct switch will force force your fifth switch to Shadow if you're Rouge, or won't do anything at all if you're still Shadow. You should then be able to make it to the end of the level without having to switch again, completing the challenge with enough of a time bonus to get the achievement. That was quite the fun puzzle to work out. I hope future achievements are even half as clever as that one was. And with that, most of the challenge mode achievements are done. The next thing I did was enter the last story and beat both Metal Madness and Metal Overlord in under 7 minutes. This was enough to get this achievement. Sonic, what was it called again? Too bad it's all over. For you! Ah, yes, thank you. And then after confirming the A rank, I get three more achievements. Perfected Impossible No is for A ranking all of the bosses for every team. All Emblem Data Has Been Copied is for getting all 120 emblems. And All Missions Kneel Before Your Master is for getting all 141 A ranks. So, with the game effectively 100% complete, you may be wondering why I'm still missing 27 achievements. Well, firstly, getting every a rank in Sonic Heroes unlocks super hard mode. 14 achievements are tied to this mode, one achievement for each level. Secondly, we've still got the special stages. Anyway, let's hope this shit doesn't take five years off my life. <laughs> well, you know what they say about famous last words.
Sonic Heroes has 14 achievements dedicated to the special stages, 7 for the bonus challenges that you get for beating the odd-numbered levels like Seaside Hill or Grand Metropolis, and 7 for the emerald challenges that you get for beating the even-numbered levels like Ocean Palace or Power Plant. To get into the special stage, you need to bring this key to the end of the level, which is accomplished by finding it in a cage and then not getting hit. Unlike a game like Sonic 2, where not getting hit is a task reserved only for those who have godlike patience and a high tolerance for bad game design, Sonic Heroes is an absolute cakewalk in comparison. Believe it or not, entering a special stage is actually pretty trivial for the most part. No, my dear viewer, it's once again the special stage itself that will make you tear your hair out and make a fucking bird's nest out of it. The controls in these special stages make the Sonic 1 special stages feel like a goddamn masterpiece. For as sensitive as the controls in Sonic Heroes can be, absolutely nothing in this video game compares to you holding right for one second and then being spun all around this cylinder at Mach 5 before unceremoniously flopping to the ground and losing all of your speed. Using your speed character in this special stage will only succeed in eroding any ounce of patience you have left. It is highly recommended that you use the power formation for these. While the controls are still garbage while using them, they turn from complete garbage to only about three quarters garbage, which cuts out more bullshit than you think. Doing this will let you get the Chaos Emeralds normally at least, but what about the achievements that are tied to the special stages? For the odd numbered special stages, you need to get a certain point total before reaching the end of the stage. This means you need to do more than just mindlessly boost to the end, as having a high boost gauge at the end will give you more points and will generally help you more than the time bonus will. The overall strategy for these is to get a lot of orbs, especially these blue starred ones since you get 500 points for each of these orbs which adds up pretty quickly, boost occasionally to keep your speed up, and hit these rainbow rings when you can. These are definitely the easier of the two sets of achievements. As long as you don't miss too many orbs or lose too much speed, this shouldn't take too many tries. It's the even-numbered special stages that will put you through a test of endurance and will determine just how much love you have for Sonic Heroes. All of these achievements not only require you to reach the Emerald under a certain amount of time, but they also expect you to have a level 3 boost gauge when you reach the Emerald. This means you have to perform one hell of a balancing act keeping your speed up as much as possible, while also not using so much of your boost that you end up getting the emerald with not enough of a boost gauge. As such, you will need to use your speed character at some points, which opens up some room for the controls to completely fuck you over. Despite all this, I was able to get the achievement for the first emerald special stage relatively easily. However, for special stage 2 in particular, which is, of course, the next emerald special stage I attempted to do this in, the margin for error was basically completely completely non-existent. You not only need every single orb you can get your grubby little mitts on to get your boost gauge where it needs to be, and you not only need to use your speed character at the start to get some speed to begin with, but you can't afford to slow down even a little bit. One hit from a bomb or just one miss input somewhere and that's a reset. And you can't just restart the special stage. What do you think the special stages are, good? No, you have to replay the level. Because of how much practice I ended up needing to be able to pull this off, this is where the system for getting into the special stage started to make me actually lose my mind. In order to get into the special stage to get another attempt, I would have to play and complete Power Plant over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. And for the love of God, don't get hit after grabbing the key or you'll have to restart and play it again. Believe me when I say that there's only so many times some people can undergo replaying the same content again and again before something in their brain snaps. I must again stress that this isn't the achievement's fault. Rather, it's the fault of whoever on the development team decided to not just make selecting this fucking emerald to replay the special stage a possibility. I almost switched off hardcore mode so that I could use save states for this. The temptation was ungodly high. But I didn't, and I kept pushing. This is my winning attempt. 
I only just barely got it after an entire hour of pain and torment from having to play the entire damn level over 20 times just to get another chance at the special stage. And don't you forget, that was only the second special stage out of seven. God help me. After that experience, it took a lot of motivation to push me to continue. But can you really blame me? Special Stage 2 was enough to push me beyond the limits of my patience. What the fuck was I gonna do against the last three Special Stages, which I still struggle with even casually? I was so ready for this journey to last another three streams just because of the special stages. And I had braced myself entirely for that possibility. Little did I know what exactly would happen when I booted up the stream for day eight. I still can't believe it. It didn't even take two hours. I discovered a downright busted trick to beat the Emerald Special Stages with a bunch of speed and very little usage of your boost, but I didn't discover that until close to the end. I wildly overestimated how hard these Special Stages were going to be. Or did I wildly underestimate myself? Either way, I did it. The hardest achievements were out of the way, and all I had left was beating Super Hard Mode. Let's finish this.
30 hours. I'm sure there are other games that will eventually take me longer than this, but for my first game that's this long, it feels surreal. This game was really fun to get all the achievements in, despite some of the more bullshit achievements. I had fun revisiting my favorite Sonic game of all time under a new lens. Shoutouts to Darky Andreas and Wandering Hey Ho for the set. Writing this part of the script feels really weird. For weeks, I've been struggling to actually write words onto this page, whether it be due to medical emergencies, insecurities about whether this script was even turning out good due to my mental health, my own battles with productivity, and some possible depression even. I don't know, it's not really diagnosed. At some points, it felt like it was never going to get done. It's relieving to be typing these words, and especially to be speaking them, with the knowledge that the script is basically complete and just needs some finishing touches. I definitely need to do a shorter game next time. And as for what that game is, <laughs> I'm not telling you. I don't want another Smash 64 situation, so I'm just gonna leave whatever game comes next a secret until I stream it. Although by now, it's probably already been streaming, so you'll have seen by then. Here's to hoping the next script doesn't take anywhere near as long as this one did. I'll see you guys next time.